Hey everyone, and welcome to Jedi as Code. Today we're going to be talking about line endings. If you've ever run into issues where git diffs were yelling at you for changing things you didn't even touch, or you've seen weird characters at the end of your lines throwing off your code, um, line endings is probably the culprit for that. So to show you what I mean, I've set up a folder right here. And in this folder, I have two files, crlf.txt and lf.txt. And at first glance, if we look at the contents of both of these files, they seem to be the exact same. The exact same lines are in crlf.txt and the exact same lines are in lf.txt. But if we take a closer look and run a diff between these two files, we'll find that diff doesn't like it. Both files or both lines in both files are not the same. So the reason for this is line endings. But before we get into fixing it, let's understand what line endings are first. So line endings or line terminators are the invisible characters at the end of new lines. So while we don't see a character every single time we hit in the enter key, the computer needs a way to represent the start of a new line. Um, these characters can vary between different platforms. So this causes compatibility issues or sometimes unforeseen side effects, such as the aforementioned giant diffs with no apparent change. So there are two characters that represent line endings. One is the carriage return, aka CR backslash R, caret M or hex zero D. And this represents a cursor movement back to column zero. So to show you what I mean, if I have a line of text and my cursor happens to be at the last position, if I enter the carriage return key, my cursor will move all the way back to the first column right here. And on the other hand, we also have the line feed character. Line feed, aka LF backslash N dollar sign or hex zero A represents a cursor movement directly downward. So it would look like this going from here to here. So again, for review, a carriage return brings your cursor from any position in the text line to the first column, like so. And line feed brings your cursor straight down. Now, Windows uses CR and LF to represent line endings, but everyone else, literally everyone else, uses a single line feed character. So as you might have guessed, this does cause some problems when handling files on multiple operating systems. So now that we have a basic idea of what line terminators are, how do we check for line endings? So there are a couple ways to do it, but the file command is probably the most simple and basic. The file command explicitly states where there are CRLF endings, but says nothing otherwise. So in our example, if we check the file type of the lf.txt, it will just say ASCII text. But if we check the crlf.txt, it will say ASCII text with CRLF line terminators. This is the clearest indicator of CRLF line terminators being present. But if we want to be a little more thorough and actually see the line endings themselves, we can use the cat command with the dash V or dash E option. So if we hop back over the terminal and look at what these options do. First, looking at dash V, dash V shows the non-printing characters, but excludes line feed and tab. So if there is a carriage return present, it will print that. Dash E, on the other hand, um, is equivalent to dash VE, but it just shows the line feed at the end of each line as well. So if we look at the same files with the cat command now, first I'll start with dash V. CRLF.txt now shows the carriage return character, but still leaves off the line feed character. So if you want to see that one as well, we can do cat dash E, and then it will show both carriage return and line feed. I prefer the dash V option. I think it's a little cleaner, but the dash E option is there for you as well. So now that we know how to view line endings, how do we fix line endings? So there are a million ways to do this, but I think the simplest and most reliable way is to use DOS to Unix or Unix to DOS. Um, it might require an install depending on your platform. There is a homebrew package, there's a Nix package, there's packages everywhere. Or if you prefer, you can compile it from source. All the links are in this document, which you can check out later and will be linked in the description below. So to show you how to convert line endings, I'll switch back over to my terminal. And we'll check that crlf.txt does indeed still have crlf line terminators. And we want to convert it from DOS format, aka Windows, to Unix. So we run DOS to Unix on crlf.txt. And that should now print out that it does not have crlf line terminators. Great. So we just have ASCII text without the crlf line terminators edition. Similarly, if we want to convert from Unix format to Windows format, we can run Unix to DOS on the same file, and we will see that we have the CRLF line terminators once again. So as I mentioned, there's quite a few ways to do this. Um, you can use sed, you can use translate, you can use vim, but I'll leave that up to you. So now we know how to convert line endings on a single file. 
we can also configure Git to automatically normalize all of our line endings. So how do we do that? First, you want to configure Git so that it locally uses LF endings. So you're just going to run this command right here, git config global core auto serial if true. This is similar to the um, git config global user.name or email if you've ever messed with those. So I'll just go ahead and copy this command on over to my terminal. Um, so it ran successfully, but if you want to double check the value, you can just leave off the true and it'll tell you what the value of that config object is. So now Git will automatically set up your line endings locally. However, I really, really highly recommend that you configure it per your Git repository via a Git attributes file. So all we have to do is create a Git attributes file, which will act as kind of a config file for the way Git behaves in your project and add this one line of code. So I'll go ahead and make this folder a Git repository now and create the Git attributes file. Paste that one line in, which essentially says, Everything that's a text file gets auto CRLF formatted. So now I'll just save and quit. And now that we have a git attributes file initiated, we can add all of our files. Now this warning message might scare you and look reversed by saying LF will be replaced by CRLF, um, but it's actually okay. This just means that line endings are getting normalized when you check in and check out of your repository. So if you want to read more on that, there's a really good Stack Overflow link um, linked in the repo. Um, but yeah, you can read this if you are interested in getting all the details on that. So back to our code. Um, if we commit now, git commit, say init line endings, um, it's automatically going to normalize line endings and save our files. So our git attributes was pretty rudimentary. Um, it's only one line, but people have made a lot of templates. Um, which you can just use for any of your projects. So if you have a C++ project or a C-sharp file, there's a lot of pre-made attributes in this repository, again, linked in this readme. So again, if you're interested in using those Git attribute templates, I definitely recommend checking out that repository. I've also included some instructions on how to change endings in an existing project. Um, so you can check that out if you like, but I won't go over it because it's pretty niche. But yeah, that's it for line endings today. If you are interested, inline endings, I definitely recommend this blog post by Tim Clem called Mind the End of Your Line. I hope today's video was informative. I've included all the links and stuff in this repository, which you could find at Jedi as code slash resources on GitHub. If you like the video, consider helping me out on the algorithm and following my Twitter. But other than that, hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.